Hello nation and welcome back to the homestead. Well today I got a little bit of a question for you and my question is are you using the right tools when it comes to collecting your firewood and for your wood burning stove? Well in this video I'm going to share with you the tools that we use here on the Big Bear Homestead to collect our firewood and to get it ready for the wood burning stove and different tools that we have that we incorporate into helping heat our home. All right, so the first thing is a chainsaw, obviously, because you gotta get the trees on the ground, the trees that you're gonna harvest for firewood. And a chainsaw, in all honesty, is just kind of personal preferences. It's about what you feel comfortable with and what you can afford. Here on the Big Bear Homestead, we use the Husqvarna, and I think it's called like the farm boss or the rancher or something like that. But that's the chainsaw that we use to fall trees. Now, once the tree is on the ground, in all honesty, one of our most important, most valuable tools that we have here on the homestead is the Log Ox Forestry Kit. Now, when we first received the uh, Log Ox Forestry Kit, they asked us to do a review on it and I'll put that video up in a card here somewhere <clears throat> right out of the box that tool became a valuable part in us being able to harvest firewood safely I have some injuries from my time in the Marine Corps and the log ox has helped out tremendously with not aggravating those injuries I'm able to pick up uh, logs transport them to our splitting station that has helps us be able to roll over logs and to uh, angle them so that way we can use the chainsaw to cut them where I don't have to worry about running my chainsaw into the dirt. So the Log Ox Forestry Tool Kit has many different aspects to harvesting the wood. So go check out that video. And while you're checking out that video, we're going to move on over to our splitting station so that way we can share with you with the tools that we use to split and cut up the wood. So we're over here at our area where we basically process uh, the logs into firewood, whether it's gonna be lo smaller logs that we're gonna use to burn for a long period of time or the split wood. So what are the tools that we use over here in this area? Well, first and foremost, and I probably should have mentioned this uh, over there at the beginning stages, but you need a good pair of leather working gloves um, when you're doing some of this. I know we like to be tough and get the calluses and stuff on our hands, but in long term, trust me as a guy who's starting to get up there in age, you really want to start protecting your hands. One of the tools that we use are mauls. I would suggest getting the fiberglass handle if you can with the ones that have the rubber, the extra rubber protecting around this part because we all tend to miss. Um, make sure it's got a good flat head on the back. That way, if it doesn't split the wood all the way and you don't really want to wrestle with pulling it out, you can take a nice little eight pound sledge, pop it in there, and uh, that'll usually take it the rest of the way and have it split. When you have those really big logs, when you get down to the base of the tree, down to the bottom part of the trunk of the tree, most of the time a maul's not going to really cut it. You're going to have to break that big piece up into smaller pieces and then use your maul to split it. So the first thing that we reach for is they call it a grenade and it's this type of splitting wedge right here. You usually stick it dead in the center. Um, I'll start it with a little five pound sledge, get it started and then I'll switch to the big sledge, drive it in and it really opens up that log. If it doesn't completely pop it all the way apart in the logs that you can uh, Go ahead and hit with the maul and get it going. It'll definitely open it up so then that way you can pull in your little five pound splitting wedge and then begin to split your wood the rest of the way open on those big logs down to a manageable pieces that you can use with the maul. To be able to get the, these uh, pieces of split wood and small logs from your processing area to your woodshed, one of the things that I would suggest is a good quality cart. Now, Robin purchased the Gorilla Cart. Now, she has a video of assembling this Gorilla Cart, and we'll put that up here in a card. 
Now, I absolutely love this little cart. We use it for everything around the homestead, but one of the things that we use it for is to transport our firewood over to our woodshed. So let's go on over to the woodshed and show you the tools that we use to process the firewood down even into uh, smaller pieces and into kindling. So now we're over here at our woodshed. Now, my woodshed is not anything fancy, it's just practical. We basically took a bunch of pallets and screwed them together and put a tin roof on it. Now, why did I choose pallets? Well, one, they're cheap and easy. <coughs> pallets, use the pallets for a floor, helps keep the wood up off the ground, and the pallets are slatted, so that way it helps airflow go through, which helps keep my wood dry. You always want good circulation, so that way if there is any firewood in there that still has a little bit of moisture, it helps dry it out. The major tool over in this area that we use, that we found this year, is this little wood splitter uh, kindling maker. And we started using it this year and it has been a game changer. And basically all we do is we put a small log in there and then we use a five pound sledge and then we uh, beat on that log so that way it can make us kindling pieces like this to help us get the fire going and by doing that our fires seem to get going faster and hotter instead of just trying to use uh, twigs and small branches and stuff like that this has really been a big game changer for us this year the link for this will be in the description below so now that we've got our wood stacked in the woodshed we talked about the splitting tool let's go into the house and we'll show you all the neat gadgets and, and tools and whatnot that we use to help uh, maintain our fire and help circulate the warm air around the house. All right, so now we're at the, the, at the point where you get to have a little bit of fun with some of these tools. One of the best tools to have is the Logox Sling. Now... This sling is worth its weight in gold. Um, it, our girls absolutely love it when they go to bring in firewood because they can put it over their body and then their arm slips in through here and then they can carry a big load of firewood into the house. And putting it away is simple also because all they do is really they just roll it up like this and then it slides underneath onto the shelf of the Logox hearth thing that holds the firewood in it. And so those two things from Logox are definitely game changers when it comes to bringing in your firewood and keeping your firewood stacked nice and neat and, uh, and giving you the distance away from the wood burning stove. Now, of course you will need tools uh, like your fireplace toolkit that you have that'll have a shovel in it, a little broom, some of them have pokers, some of them have grabbers. Those are definitely a must have to have. You can also get an aftermarket shovel uh, that you can pick up, they're usually not that long. Coverson, it really depends on the type of wood burning stove you got, which one will work better. And then you're gonna need an ash bucket to be able to transport your ashes out to either your garden, your compost pile, wherever it is that you decide that you're going to place your wood ash. Then another thing that I would like to add that we use here a lot is just a good pair of welder's gloves. And the girls like to put on the welder's gloves to be able to place the wood in there. They feel protected from the heat and everything. Now some of the other things that, especially with a wood burning stove, more of a wood burning stove than a fireplace, um, is a kettle and we like to keep a pot on here as well, cast iron uh, like Dutch oven pot. The kettle, we just put water in. It helps keep humidity in the room because this is a dry heat. And so this helps keep the humidity up so there's not that much static electricity and stuff like that. And the pot is pretty much the same thing except for Robin likes to put different herbs and different things in there to help create an aroma throughout the house. Like she's put the anise stars in there. She's put some cinnamon in there. Uh, she's put different, some different essential oils in there too. Just make the house smell more Christmassy. And then the other really 
solid piece of equipment is this fan back here. We started using this fan this year and absolutely love it to help circulate uh, the air around the house. Um, it doesn't, no batteries, no anything. The heat that genera is generated from the wood burning stove activates the motor, which spins the fan, which pushes, pushes the heat. So absolutely no power uh, is used in that fan and personally I think it pushes the air better than the electric fan that is on the back of the wood burning stove plus we can direct where we want it so if the back of the house is getting uh, cooler than the front of the house we can turn that fan and it can push the air out through that way Dessa has placed her tortoises behind the wood burning stove so that way they can benefit from the heat and we don't have to use an electric heater with them, and if her area, if her thermostat's not where she wants it to be, she can turn that fan around and push the heat towards her tortoises. And so there you have it. Those are all the tools that we use here on the Big Bear Homestead in order to make uh, our firewood collection and wood burning enjoyable and definitely a lot easier on backs and arms and elbows and old bones. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd like for you to go check out this video on the hidden costs of installing a wood burning stove. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless and have a nice day.